Hi everyone, this is Paris Tabono of The Fortune Teller Shop. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to uh, answer anything about tarot or maybe business if you want to ask. I'm not doing readings tonight, but if you have anything, I'm happy to, um, to answer. Here I'm in Malta and it's very, the street is very quiet. You know, usually the street has lots of people out, but today was quite windy. So I think most of the people are somewhere where there's not a lot of wind happening. I'm right on the seafront here. So opposite the road, there's literally the sea. So when it's windy, um, you know, we get the sea, the sea wind. In summertime, it's great because you get the sea breeze. But um, when it's cold, the wind hits the front of my house and my shop. So often people, you know, uh, keep away until it's not so windy. How many clients do you have per day? Um, clients can vary from two to seven or eight. Uh, today I had three clients, um, which is kind of low. It's kind of, uh, um, it's a low number, but I think it was because it was windy today and sometimes it's very busy. So it just depends, depends on the weather sometimes, um, yeah, so uh, today was a bit of a slower day. So yeah, I just did stuff online. When, when I'm not busy with clients, I tend to do stuff online. Yeah, so it just varies. But you know, in this, I've been in this industry, in this job now for 30 years, that's three zero. And it does go in phases of busy and not busy, just like every shop, you know, like uh, any shop, any retail store has its, it's busy time and it's low time and it can it can be influenced by the season it can be influenced by uh, events uh, and it can be the, the product so you know obviously summertime summer products sell and then you know winter time winter products sell but um, in all the shops that I've worked for um, yeah sometimes it, it sort of gets a bit slow usually in Sydney it would get slow in the winter time in um, in Sydney winter is in the middle of the year okay so it's the opposite to Europe and um, we used to call it the mid-year slump because it was cold it would get dark early uh, people wouldn't be shopping because it's cold and dark so they don't want to be out on the streets shopping they want to be at home cooking cooking up some nice warm soup and so uh, we would often you know the uh, the client base or the income would tend to slump mid-year but then when the weather started getting warmer and end of year would pick up because people would be looking at what's going to happen in the, the, the new year so I'd find that you know around before Christmas before the new year, it would be very busy again because people want to know if they're going to change jobs or if they're going to find new love or whatever it is. So it would kind of go up. And then January, February was usually busy in Sydney because it was still warm, summertime. So people are out, you know, at the beach, they're out shopping and they're, they're also, you know, getting ready to go back to work if they were on holidays and uh and also the school kids would be on holidays and then you know everyone was starting to think of what they're going to do for the new year so then it will still be busy and then it will sort of slump down in um mid-year now because i've moved to europe in the last year and a half i've been living in europe it's opposite the seasons are opposite so um we're going into winter now and this Whereas if I was in Sydney, they're going into spring and summer. So it's like the opposite. So I haven't really experienced Malta um, in its full winter being a business. Because um, when, when I got here last winter, I didn't have a shop yet. 
So this is going to be my first winter having a shop. So I'm also not sure how that's going to go. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know if they have a, a winter slump in Malta. I'm assuming they do because, like I said, the street tonight is very empty. And usually in summertime, it's packed. Uh, so yeah, I've, I've not experienced a full winter in Malta with a business, you know, so it's going to be interesting to see how that works here. I don't know. Okay, do people request readings in Malta? Many seem skeptic there. Um, I think like most places in the world, I think people act skeptic on the outside, but they're not. Um, people do request readings in Malta, yes, and uh, it's basically the same as when I was in Sydney. It's about the same amount. Uh, I think in Malta, people are a bit more private though, because they don't want their friends or family or whatever to see them coming into the shop. So often some of them get a bit nervous. They don't, you know, they don't want to be seen near the window type of thing. I've had people that have sort of said, can they move away from, you know, from the front window? Uh, because they don't want to be recognised. But once they sit down, they're usually, um, they're usually fine. This, this area that I live in Malta is a beach area. And literally, uh, like I said already, the beach is across the road. So if I wanted to go swimming, it's just literally like one minute walk away. And so in summertime, it's very crowded here because of the uh, tourism. Um, so this is, um, you know, really like a really touristy summer spot. Yeah, so going back to, uh, do people request readings in Malta? Um, so far, when I've met someone who says they're skeptic in Malta, often within two minutes, they're not skeptic anymore. They might say it, like I've had people sit down and sort of say to me, I'm, you know, I'm a skeptic and I'm like, okay, you know, what's your date of birth and what's your first name? And then I start the reading. <laughs> and then after like literally two minutes, that person is not a skeptic because I'll just tell them about their love life or their whatever, their career, whatever's going on. And then they no longer are skeptic. I had, I had one the other day and another one the other day. I had a, a woman the other day. She came in quite, quite polite. She sat down, hi. She said, hi. I said, did you want a reading? She said, yep. And I said, take a seat. She, she was Maltese, but she spoke English very well. Or maybe she was even half Maltese and half English because she had an English accent. But um, her second name was Maltese, though. So maybe her father was Maltese. Anyway, she said, look, I have to tell you I'm a skeptic. And uh, I said, that's fine. I said, that's good. I said, being a skeptic is good. It's healthy, being a healthy skeptic. You don't want to believe everything. You just want, you know, you want to be uh, balanced. Anyway, after, you know, pinpointing her love life, she basically said, uh, oh, she said, I'm not a skeptic anymore. So that was one. And then I had a, a guy about two weeks ago, same thing. He made a booking. Um, he told me on the phone that he's a skeptic when he made the booking. I said, that's fine. And then he turned up for the reading. I started reading his love life, especially because he wanted to know about that. And I basically said, um, you've just had a breakup. It seems like a divorce or a separation it looks like a major one. And it looks quite difficult. He, he sort of went white. He sort of like, it was like, he wasn't expecting me to just pick up on it straight away. 
Um, and um, he basically was speechless because uh, then I said to him, do you have, you know, do you have a question? Is there something you want to ask about that? And he just was like, um, his tongue was tied. And I said, are you okay? And he said, uh, yeah, he said, I just wasn't expecting you to say it all so quickly. I tend to, when I, when I do readings, this is my style anyway, I, I'm very quick, like within, like the person sits down, they write their name on a piece of paper. I, I usually do a little bit of an astrology, um, a little bit of an astrology chart for them. And I get them to write their name. All I need is their name and their date of birth. I don't. I don't even need their second name. I just need their first name, and then I and their date of birth. And then I basically start reading like within a minute. And um, so often, what happens is when I get a skeptic, they're expecting some song and dance. You know, they're expecting. I don't know. They're probably expecting me to try to get information out of them or trying to find out about their background or something but I don't I just go into it and I just say okay there seems to be a breakup in your love life or your career change or whatever it is and they they sometimes get shocked because it's just very quick and I don't ask them anything I I start the reading by telling them um you know so yeah so I had you know two skeptics you know one the other day and one a few weeks ago and both of them left the shop, not skeptic anymore. In fact, I think the guy was a bit shocked because he, like I said, he was quite kind of speechless. And I said to him, that's okay. I said, I said, I, I'm pretty fast. And uh, I said, just, I just said, I just said to him, just relax and think about what you want to know. And he said, he was in, in a little bit of shock. <laughs> I said, that's okay. Just calm down. Said, um, I'm just telling you what I'm seeing, you know, and um, then he sort of kind of, you know, got his bearings and then he was started, then he started asking me about, you know, things he wanted to know. But yeah, he was a bit shocked. Uh, another one time, actually, I, um, I had a similar experience in Sydney. Um, I, I remember it was a young guy. He was maybe early 30s, um, kind of cocky. You know, he's quite, he was kind of like, you know, gym, gym boy. He was a gym bunny. Um, he came into my shop and he was like challenging me straight away. He said something like, oh, you know, that this is going to be fun or something like that, you know, like, like challenging me. And I said to him, um, you know, do you want a reading? And he said, yeah, this will be fun. Let's see what this turns out to be. Something like that. He was kind of being a bit of a dick. And um, basically, I said, okay, write your name on this piece of paper and your date of birth. And I started, you know, started talking. I said, you know, there's whatever it was. I can't remember. It was a few years ago. Um, I said, this is happening. That's happening. That's happening in your career. This is happening in your love life. He actually got physically sick. He literally went, he, he got like a knot in his throat when I was talking to him about his life and I said to him, are you okay? And he was like, oh, like it, it was just shocking. I, I, I didn't say anything shocking. I didn't say anything like that was uh, shocking. I just said uh, what was happening, you know, and, but it, it, it sort of shocked him because he was expecting me, I said, I suppose he was expecting me to make stuff up or, you know, to be totally wrong or something like that. And he actually literally wanted to vomit. So he went outside quickly and he vomited <laughs> across the, like we had a, we had a, um, it was a footpath and then there was like a little garden area with trees. And he actually, you know, vomited in the trees in the garden. And, you know, then I went and got him some water and, you know, he came back into the shop and literally I was only talking to him for like three or four minutes, you know, and he, you know, he, you know, he was okay. And then I said, are you okay? Um, he said, you know, I gave him some water and all that. And then I said, just calm down, breathe, breathe. I said, what's, what's wrong? And he said, I was just a little bit taken back by what you said, you know, like about his love life and about his career. Um, 
And yeah, so that's, you know, that's what, that's what a skept, sometimes that's what happens with skeptics. Sometimes uh, when someone says they're skeptic, really what that means is they've never experienced a reading before, not, not, not a professional reading. They might have seen tarot cards or maybe a friend or someone they know might have played with the cards. But um, when they get a real reading, often in my experience, they get very confronted more than, um, yeah, they just get confronted because they can't, when the way I do it, like I say, it's very to the point and very direct and very quick. So I don't, I don't ask them questions or anything like that. I just nail, nail the issue. Um, you know, so yeah, so that's a skeptics. I'm not, I'm not bothered with skeptics. I actually like skeptics because Often, um, usually an, a, a, an interesting conversation happens in the reading or they ask me something or, you know, about how it works. And then we usually talk about that too. So I find that kind of uh, reading and that kind of client quite, uh, quite um, rewarding because I'm usually explaining things to them or showing them how it works. So, yeah, I don't, I think the worst skeptics there are different types of course but the ones that aren't good is when you're giving them information you are correct and they deny it there's ones that do that as well um you know there are people that you can give them information but because they're so um because they're so uh wanting to be right they disregard what you are saying to them, even if you are actually accurate. So like I've had people online that have never met me and don't have never had a reading from me. Well, you know, they'll go online and say things like I'm a fake or I'm a, a charlatan or I'm cheating people. And often I'll private message them. I've done this a few times and I'll say to them, hi, you know, I'm Paris De Bono. I'll say to them, I notice you th say that I'm a, uh, that I'm a cheat or I'm lying to people, whatever. I say, why don't you come and meet me? Why don't you come and have a reading with me? And often they won't want to, you know, they're just happy to stick with that. What I do, what we do, tarot is not real. Psychic is not real. The, and, for them to literally come and meet me, have a reading would be too shocking for them. It would, it would upset their worldview, you know, especially the religious ones, like someone mentioned, you know, uh, am I, am I busy in Malta? Um, there's a lot of, um, religious, uh, people that are Catholic, for example, um, uh, that, if they got a reading by somebody that was accurate, like a real accurate fortune teller, tarot reader, psychic, it would be too upsetting for them. It would rock their belief system too much. So what happens is uh, religious people, especially the traditional religious people, um, they'll rather stand back or far away and say that you are fake because then they get to stick to their belief. Right. Um, whereas they would avoid coming to you, coming to us, coming to me, uh, because if we were right, if I was right, that would rock their world too much. It would rock their faith even, even though uh, this is divination and divination is divining, getting connected to the divine. So it's a form of connecting to the higher self, the divine or God, people call it, you know. So this is a way of connecting to God. But because they don't see it that way, because they've been um, indoctrinated into thinking God is in a book, um, it rocks their world too much. So really, they're afraid more than anything, you know. 
Like what I notice in Malta, because it is such a Catholic country, I think a lot of people are afraid that meeting someone like me is going to rock their world or that I can prove something to them, you see? And that's why a lot of them do not want to come and get a reading or even talk with me like face to face. Okay, I've got a uh, question here. I have had someone offer a reading and then it was so obvious that they were guessing. Yeah, well, that's there's a lot of fakes. You know, if you've been if you've been uh, in the tarot, tarot, tarot group for a while, you'll notice there's a lot of fakes, um, you know. Usually they're from poorer countries and they, you know, they're trying to make money. But yeah, they, they don't know how to read cards at all. The ones I've talked to, because I've had, I've got many videos called, um, uh, what is it? Sc uh, Scam the Scammers. I've got a lot of videos called Scam the Scammers on YouTube. If you look it up, Scam the Scammers, Paris de Bono, you'll see how funny some of the uh, stories and the, you know, these people are. They don't know what they're talking about. Okay, Sue says, well, I, well said, it is a godly connection, yeah. Well, um, you know, it, it's, it's very obvious when religious people, um, especially the, like I say, the, the ones that are very, like, indoctrinated into a box, they only think God is in a box and God can only speak, like, one way. You know, and sometimes when I do speak, to, look, often if someone's really stuck in the like, uh, you know, like in the in the Christian, um, you know, mold, often these days I don't even bother talking with them because they're just so stuck in their ways. I don't, I don't want to have a debate about the Bible. I'm not that interested in it. Uh, I've probably studied it more than they have, but I don't really want to, you know, be quoting things from it. It's just, it's just boring. It's a waste of time for me. Um, but when I, when I do meet them or when, when they, you know, when they have a conversation, um, it's really fear. They're just afraid. Like I said, they're afraid of getting their, their world turned upside down and they'll have to go and search for answers themselves. So they don't want to do that. You know, their, their, their whole, um, foundation will come, will crumble, you know, and, um, you know, I've, I've also had Muslim clients here as well. In Malta, there's quite a fair, uh, you know, fair, um, fair Muslim community as well. Um, and I've had many Muslim clients here. So it's quite funny when I start talking about, uh, you know, planets to them, like talking about Jupiter and Venus and, you know, the, um, the Greek gods. And uh, <laughs> it's kind of weird when, you know, I'm talking to someone who... Um, is Muslim and I'm telling them about Mercury and Venus and and uh, and you know they you know they believe in one God and I'm talking about all these different gods. It's quite weird, but it seems to work. They seem to understand and they seem to like it. So um, you know I don't edit myself. I just tell them you know you know I tell them I'm an astrologer. I we, I use planets. I also read the palm and the palm has got all the different planets on there as well. And uh, I just go for it and, you know, and that's it. You know, I think in a way we're lucky because we get to speak to the divine and they really, not Muslims only, but uh, people that read from a book, they don't really connect with the divine the same way we do. You know, we, we have a conversation. They're only having a one-way conversation, most of them. They're just praying or begging for something and they're not getting... They're not getting the uh, information back, you know. They're just begging for God to do something for them. Whereas with, when you're a tarot reader or when you're into divination, you are getting, you know, the universe is calling, is speaking back to you. You're, you're getting messages from the cards, you know, will this be successful or not successful? And you get the cards and it says it's not going to be successful. There's your conversation with, with the higher self. Whereas the people that don't do divination, they're just hoping, they're hoping, they're praying, they're hoping, you know, going to church, giving money or whatever they do. And it's like, you're not getting really anything back. It's just very it's kind of sad. Okay. They want to 
that's why they're curious. Yeah, they want to, some of, some of the people, you know, everyone's, you know, unique. So everyone's going to react differently. Some people are just curious and they want to learn something, you know, some people um, don't have any religious, you know, thoughts. They just want it. They see a fortune teller. They just think it's going to be interesting. So they come in and they learn something. Uh, so there's, there's just so many different, there's so many different flavors of people, you know, um, to be honest, I thought moving to Malta and working here, I thought I was going to get more pushback, but I, I haven't so far. I've been here a year and a half now, and I've had my shop probably for a few months, like, you know, five, six months. Um, and I thought I was going to get more pushback, but I haven't. I've even been on TV twice as well in Malta. And so far I have not had um, anything like any real pushback. There was one, one person, a crazy, he was like a crazy, I don't know if he was a priest or whether he was a wannabe priest or something, but he, he was, he did a video or a, what was it a video? Yeah, it was a video. And he was talking about crystals and tarot cards and how they're all evil. And I, I, I watched it for like a minute because I just thought this guy, he doesn't, he's very misguided. Um, but he was saying crystals are evil. And I thought to myself, well, crystals come from nature. You know, they're a, they're a mineral and they were created over thousands of years, even millions of years. And they're part of the earth, you know, and they, they're energy. And so how can they be evil? Like, how does he relate that to evil? I, I wasn't, you know, and once I heard him say that, I just thought this guy's just very, he's just afraid of nature. He's afraid of the world, you know, and if he is a Christian, then who created the world? Isn't that God? So it's kind of like, God created crystals, but the crystals are now evil. So how does that make sense? I don't know how that makes sense to him, but he was very adamant that that was that. But I just didn't want to get involved with him. Um, I just thought, you know, he's he's obviously, um, you know, he's obviously got his own thoughts. So I didn't want to get into a debate with him. How would you... Well... Uh, he would think I was awful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, isn't it sad that somebody thinks a beautiful crystal is evil? I mean, it's a crystal. It's, it's beautiful. It's like a freak of nature. It's like a, you know, it's a jewel, you know, how would someone think that is evil? It's just so really sad. It just shows how brainwashed uh, you know, someone is to think that, you know, uh, even tarot cards, like tarot cards are beautiful. You know, they've got beautiful imagery. They've got beautiful symbolism. How could someone think that was evil? Um, it's just really sad because the, the cards are wise, it's, it's, you know, they're, 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 there's wisdom in them. And also in the Bible, anyway, the Bible is pretty much like a, a deck of tarot cards. It has pretty much it has the lovers, it has the tree of knowledge, it has judgment day, it has the devil, you know, it's got the star, it's got the angel, it's it's all in the tarot deck, you know. So it's kind of very disjointed that uh, people would be so, um, so cut off. But I suppose that's, you know, they've been brainwashed, you know. Look, this was not planned. I didn't plan to be speaking this long. So it's kind of uh, fun. But um, does anyone... I'm going to finish up because it is getting a bit late. So nice talking to you. This is Paris Bono of The Fortune Teller Shop.